Yeah, it's definitely a growing trend. Um, there's always been a connection between philosophy and science. In fact, in the beginning, there was no distinction. So Aristotle was a philosopher. He was also a biologist. He was also an economist. Um, and in a way, he was a physicist. So yeah, but it is coming closer together again. And I think the reason for this is that um, you know, scientists are studying things of great interest to philosophers, like uh, the scientific study of free will that really got going um, not until the 1980s when these libid experiments that I talked about uh, started up. Um, there's been a lot of good social psychological work on things like weakness of will and self-deception for, well, more than decades. Um, and I've been interested in that stuff since I was young. Um, it, it is growing, I think, yeah, because there's more scientific done, uh, work done now on these philosophical topics. Um, oh, I don't know what else. It, it might be that people are thinking, well, traditional philosophical methodologies have been around for a long time, and they've gotten us to a certain place, and that's good, but we can get even further, uh, faster, by bringing more on board, you know, scientific results. Um, and uh, I actually do a lot of work with scientists. In fact, I think I can mention this now. Um, I'm about to receive a $4.8 million grant to start a free will project at Florida State University, where I am. And uh, the granting agency is the John Templeton Foundation. Now, most of the money will go out in grants um, to scientists and others who make proposals on free will. Uh, $2.8 million is going to go out to uh, the science of free will. And what I'd like to see uh, happen is that we have teams of neuroscientists, social psychologists, and philosophers working together uh, to design uh, free will studies and then you know, write up the papers, analyze the results, and so on. Um, so for me, this is a, a really exciting time uh, at the intersection of science and philosophy. And uh, this thing called experimental philosophy, which um, didn't really exist until 10 years ago, uh, has really taken off. I was up here in New York City last Monday um, to be in a session on experimental philosophy. There was a big audience, uh, a lot of excitement. Uh, so in 10 years, it's gone from nothing to you know, something pretty exciting.